Shabbat Shalom. In this week's parsha, Moshe Rabbeinu continues his recap, his uh, recount of the whole story of the 40 years uh, that have gone past uh, as he's led the Jewish people out of uh, Egypt and in the desert, and they're now encamped very close to the Promised Land. And as part of his uh, narrative, he actually mentions twice the fact that the man and the fact that the man was given to the Jews after God had starved them and, and tortured them. Now, of course, one part it's to to be starved is is a form of torture, but if the Torah uses two words, then I think we have the right to ask, you know, really, what what is the torture involved here beyond the fact that they were hungry? And second, uh, the question is, what was the point of this? Of course, the Torah says the man and you should know that God, we don't live from lechem of ado and bread alone, and one could make out of this uh, very simple, superficial drush about emuna, having faith in God, but I think there's room here again to see for uh, you know a, a, a more uh, precise and, and uh, I would think deeper and more long-lasting lesson about what was involved in in uh, starving the Jews and putting them through this ide- ordeal, uh, and, and then and then uh, getting the man from heaven. I'm not, of course, the first person to ask these questions, and of the explanations that I found, the one that's given by Rabbi Mupachaya and repeated by others is the one that I, I find most appealing with regard to the torture, that is. The torture was that no matter, even though the Jews had this man, this delicious, nutritious substance appear for them every morning, but they could never put any away for the next day. And there's a form of torture involved, the sort of anxiety that one has when there's nothing in the food cabinet, nothing in the refrigerator, uh, to eat tomorrow, especially now in our own day, we all probably have at home enough food for a week or two if something were to happen, and uh, the, and you're living really from hand to mouth, from day to day, with with absolutely nothing in your in your in your food basket for for the next day, is is a, is a form of torture, a form of of mental anxiety, even though you're not hungry because the man is is giving you the sustenance. Uh, for for that for that day, uh, then with regard to the lesson, well, it, I think it 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 it, it uh, connects to a number of lessons that we have we've had, and I think I've pointed out the extreme regimen of the forty years in the desert. This door, the store midbar, the door that the, the the generation that left Egypt, and then the generation in particular that was born in the desert and raised in these harsh conditions. Moshe Rabbeinu had a very, very difficult task to take a people of, of slaves, a group of slaves who had uh, no education, no self-pride, no discipline, really were, 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 were almost down to the level of animals, and make them into an amsagula, make them into, into a people who were uh, worthy and, and able to accept the Torah and would be disciplined enough to live by the Torah, and of course be uh, hardy enough to go and, and and take possession of our homeland. And I think these are the two the two things that come together in this extreme regimen, including this anxiety of not really knowing what we're going to eat tomorrow that lies behind today's parsha. So as I said, we had this uh, notion that that the Rambam finds in, 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 the, in the, the statement that HaKadosh Baruch Hu made right at, at the time of the Exodus in Pashat B'Shalach, Lo nacham Elohim derech eretz b'shtim ki karovu, that God did not want, though there was a shorter route to Eretz Yisrael, God chose a longer route because it, it was necessary for a whole generation to pass and a new generation to be raised that will be uh, disciplined and worthy uh, uh, of, of, of the Torah and of entering Eretz Israel. And this leads us to some 
difficult questions concerning, you know, the, the supposed reason for the delay, the 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 uh, the, the Chet and in a in a in a, a marginal note actually to a, the Maimonides Guide, which I found and published in the last issue of Dot, it, the the man the commentator whose name I don't know was, was not revealed to us, uh, says this is the reason behind the Makoshesh Etzim. This man who was gathering firewood on 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 Shabbat. And some strange things happened. First of all, Moshe Rabbeinu didn't know what to, what to do, even though the Torah told us already that you know, violating the Shabbat is a, is a capital crime. And he had to receive a direct order from HaKadosh Baruch Hu to execute this person. And he explains that, that this is, because this is, a, this is really an extreme measure. Ordinarily, uh, as someone doing something like, like you know, Koshe Shetzim, we would find some way, even though the Torah tells us that, that, that the uh, violating the Shabbat is a capital crime, but for something like that, uh, Beit Din would have found some way, you know, not to carry out this punishment. But because we were in these extreme conditions, where this undisciplined group of slaves had to get it into them, one way or another, uh, what it means to follow God's command and follow the law, there was need for this uh, extreme uh, form of punishment. The same with regard to uh, to the uh, uh, the man, because uh, uh, we have to understand that, that 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 slavery at the time was an economic institution, and like all economic institutions, it's a, it's a two way street. Yes, we all know that the master had benefits; he could do whatever he wanted to the slaves, have them, you know, do whatever he asked. He could beat them if they didn't uh, follow his uh, his orders. But there were advantages to the slave. The slave had a place to sleep and a meal every day. And the type of anxiety that was going, going through the Jewish people at, at, during the, the desert, where, what am I going to eat tomorrow, was something they didn't have. And this is why the Jewish people were complaining in the desert all the time that they want to go back to Egypt. Yes, they were slaves. Yes, they, they were second class or third class or eighth class citizens. Yes, they were being forced to, to do manual labor and so on and so forth. But they had the security of having a place to uh, sleep and uh, a variegated, rich menu that we provide for them every day. And some people would prefer, you know, to have the security of 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 of, of uh, uh, their daily meal without any worries, even if it meant living as slaves. And we had to, uh, and it was necessary to educate the Jewish people that no, slavery is not an option. And if, if the price for being free is a higher dose of anxiety, it's a price well worth well it's well worth the price. Yes. So withdrawing from slavery, becoming free, it's it's a sort of withdrawal which has some of the, the pains and tortures of, of withdrawal from, from drugs or alcohol. But it, as in those cases, it's well worth the pain, and one shouldn't think that the uh, returning to one's addiction is an option. So, we were tortured. We had to go through this anxiety of not knowing what we would eat the next day in order to get ourselves out of this slave mentality that's saying, well, uh, you know, uh, Master will certainly give me a, a good meal tomorrow, so why don't I just stay here and be a slave the rest of my life? And freeing oneself from slavery, freedom, True freedom, freedom not just from political oppression, but freedom from, from the slave mentality and freedom from being addicted to all sorts of, of, of nonsense and feeling that one cannot do without it is an ongoing process and one is never one can never be a hundred percent sure that one is free. The Gemara tells us about a certain Kohen Godol, the high priest, who was, you know, a very pious and observant Jew. And he was over 80 years old when he finally gave in to some of the heretical, uh, non-orthodox uh, views that were going on at the time. So one should never trust oneself as long as one is alive. One should never trust oneself. One can, one, you know, Dov Shem Tov Mishem Tov, one can have a good name only after one has left this world and the, the book is closed and we can say, you know, that, 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 that the person had, had, had lived the, the, the entire life, particularly uh, the, had developed into a good person. It's, it's an ongoing uh, a, a struggle, 
and it involves a certain form of anxiety, a certain form of torture, a certain, you know, questioning where will my next meal be, where will my next uh, satisfaction be, or where will my next, uh, you know, whatever, whatever it is be. But it's all worth the price. Freedom is a great, great uh, value. Freedom is a ground that should be, you know, uh, fought for and struggled for and uh, exploited, care, uh, exploited to the full. We should take advantage of our freedom to, uh, to refine ourselves, to put our minds to the higher uh, purposes and the higher forms of knowledge uh, to get to know and love God. Thank you very much, uh, and Shabbat Shalom.